In this part of the landing page project, we are going to add loading animations to our site using Framer Motion. If you haven't watched the previous part, I'll leave the link in the description below. And with that, let's jump in. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to use a framework called Framer Motion, which is a very powerful framework, one of my favorites for adding animations. Typically, Framer Motion, you'd need to add it to the package.json file and then do npm install. But when we ran npm install at the beginning, it would have already installed Framer Motion. So we're all set with that. Now, if you've never used Framer Motion before, don't worry about it. I will walk through kind of the basics of how it works as we kind of walk through this build. We'll kind of get a few different chances to try it out kind of with three different animations here. First for the kind of banner text, uh, which I would say is the most interesting animation, but also probably the most complex. So we'll kind of tackle that last once we've built up the other two. And then we had a simple animation for the text here on the right, simple fade in and slide up animation. And then we also had an animation for the video on load. Let's jump in and let's start with this text on the right and start with that animation. The first thing you have to know uh, for working with firm motion is you need to, we need to convert any HTML elements to Framer Motion components. Now, it's really simple to do that. So for example, we want to animate this div here with the text. So I need to convert this into a motion component. All I need to do for that is just to add motion dot in front of the div, and then same with the ending tag. And so this now converts it into a Framer Motion compatible div component. For all intents and purposes, it's the same as a div component, but we just can now attach frame or motion animations to it. Now, it'll complain at me. It doesn't know what this motion thing is. That's because we need to import motion from frame or motion at the very top. Simple enough, but you'll see it goes away. Now, you'll see when I refresh the page, nothing happens. It, it doesn't, didn't really do anything, uh, but that's fine. That's because we didn't tell it to do any animations yet, but now it is ready to accept animations. The way frame or motion works is we define animations in sort of let's call them animation objects. And then we pass those objects into frame or motion components, which then will do the animations that we define in the objects. Now, given we have a few different animations we're going to be building, I'm just going to throw all these objects into a separate file just to make sure our files remain a little bit clean and readable. So for that, I'm going to add a new folder here first, just called utils, kind of a utility folder. And within that, I'm going to make a file called animations.tsx. And this is where we will put all of our animations. Let's start with, again, with this text and defining the animation for this text. So for that, I'm just going to make a new object here. I'm going to call it rise with fade, very descriptive. Uh, and you'll notice I'm exporting it because I'm going to have to import it into the index.tsx file in a little bit. So inside this object, there's two attributes that we'll focus on defining here. The first is something called initial. This is effectively telling the component what you want the styling to be pre-animation. So what is the starting point of the animation? And then we'll define a second attribute here called animate. This is defining what we want the styling to be once the animation is done. So what's the end point of the animation? And then also, how do you want to define the transition between the start and the end points? So let's start with initial. So here, again, given we want to have it come up vertically and also fade in, we're going to set the initial value, two initial values. So first, the Y position of the object to be 100. So that means we want it to be essentially 100 pixels down from where it should be essentially at the end. So the animation will come up. And then we'll set the opacity to zero. So it's going to be completely uh, transparent at the beginning, and then it will fade in. And then now in animate, we'll set the endpoint. So here we'll say the Y to be zero, so kind of where it needs to be. And then opacity to be one, so full opacity. And then we'll also define this transition. So there's two attributes we'll add here versus an ease, so we can define the actual ease curve for the animation. You can get really granular, like for example, I'm going to pass in this array of four numbers that define a specific cubic. Bezier curve, which is kind of the most granular definition you can give to Tailwind. You can also, it has predefined kind of ease in, ease out curves that you can just put in. But this is a curve I found at some point and really like it. So I use it everywhere pretty much. So you can just copy these values in. And the second transition attribute you need to define is a duration in seconds. So here I'm going to set it to be 0.7 seconds. Great. So with that, we've kind of defined our animation. So now we just need to attach it to the object. It's really simple to do that. So let me come back here into the index file, find our motion div, and we just need to add a attribute called variance. And this is where we pass in our rise with fade object. 
Now it's complaining because it can't find it, and that is because VS Code is acting up. But here we go. You can import it at the top. Now hit save. And you'll notice it actually doesn't do anything. I'm refreshing the page, and there's no animation. Why is that? Well, it's a nuance here. So remember these initial and animate attributes that we gave in the object? Well, those are the default names that Frame of Motion gives to these attributes. But in reality, we can call them whatever we want. We can call them apple and banana if we really wanted to. Uh, but of course, no one would know what those are. But because we had that flexibility, we need to tell Frame of Motion essentially the mapping. You know, what are we calling the initial attribute here? And say for animate. And we can define that on an element by element basis, which is really nice control to have. But what's really nice is when we set that mapping for an element for a component, it will apply that mapping to all of its children. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is in the ultimate parent div, because I'm going to call initial, initial, and animate, animate everywhere, I'm just going to set that mapping on the ultimate parent. So all we have to do is say, well, initial, what are we going to call it? We're calling it initial. And animate, we're calling it animate. Now, it's complaining because we need to make this div now a motion component. So it actually knows what this initial and animate stuff is. So do that on the end tag as well. Now when I hit save, look at that. We now have an animation. That's awesome. One animation down. Let's move to the video animation next. So for that, let me go back to the animations file and we can define the next animation. So this one, let's call it just video animation. Again, let's set an initial value. Now, for this one, I'm going to do a similar animation here in terms of have it fade and then move up. But I'm also going to add another element here of scaling in the animation. So I'm going to have it start a little bit smaller and then scale up. It'll have this really cool kind of blowout effect when it loads in. Great. So that's the initial. And then now let's set the end state. So y0, opacity of 1, scale of 1. And then transition, I'm just going to copy the transition from before. And I'm just going to make it last a little bit longer and just set it to one. And great, now we have the video animation. So now let's attach it. Now, as you guessed, we need to go to the video component and make it a motion video. And remember to add it to the end tag as well. And then we simply need to pass it the object in as the variance component in the variance attribute, video animation. Of course, it doesn't know it. So video animation. OK, and now if I hit save, there we go. And you can see that scaling, the impact the scaling has, it's like this really nice subtle blowout effect, which I think really adds actually a nice subtle touch to the animation. Two animations down, one more to go, which is our banner text animation. And as I said, I think the coolest one of all of them. Now, why do I say this is a little bit more complicated? Well, if you remember from the demo, the animation we're going for is animating each of the individual words in this banner text individually in succession. And so that's what makes it a little bit more complex. Now, tactically, the way we would want to do this is split this text up into individual words. So we need to split this into, let's say, six spans and then animate each of the spans in individually. You know, I could go here and manually go in and make these six different spans in the code and then animate each of them individually. But then tomorrow, if we need to change the text and say, super helper robots for a better every day, I need to go in and update the HTML, update the styling, update the animations, just for that small change of adding a word. And so it's not super scalable. And so we're going to be a little bit smarter here in trying to make this a little bit scalable and ultimately be able to pass in any set of words and it will be able to handle kind of setting up this animation for us. So for that, we're going to actually encapsulate all of the animation logic in a separate component that we will then pull in here. And so this component, we'll just go to the bottom here of the index file and just create it here. Let's call this animated words. Because we're in TypeScript here, we need to be precise about our definitions. So I'm going to type it as a React functional component. We need to set a typing for the properties in a second. But effectively, what we want to pass in is just a string, right? What is the string that we want to split out and then animate in individually? Let me quickly define a typing here at the top. So type animated words props. And again, as we said, we just need to be a single property of title of type string. And so now I can pass that in here. 
and I will recognize this destructured props as well. Boom. So now we just need to tell it what to return. So here, let's build out first just the structure of it. So I'm going to have the kind of main return value be as span. Within the span, what we're going to do is open up curly braces because we do a little bit of JavaScript here. We're going to take the title input. We're going to first split it based on just spaces. So this will return an array of all the words. And then I'm going to map this array. And let's take the individual word and the index values for each as we run through the array. And then what I'm going to do is first I'm going to make a div. I'm going to set the key of this div to be the index. This is just good hygiene as you map over any sort of array and display out components. And then I'm going to set the span. I'm going to add a span. And the value of this span is going to be word, so the actual word. But I'm also going to add a Unicode character for an, an empty space. Now, it turns out if I just try to put in a blank space instead of this Unicode character, React tries to be really smart and says, oh, you know, these are just random extra spaces at the end. I'm going to trim all of them. But what happens is it, it smushes all the spans together. And so it just becomes one big word instead of like the six different words, which obviously is not what we want. So to force it to essentially space out the words, we have to add this the Unicode, explicit Unicode character for empty space. Great. So that's the structure. And so let's go and actually flow this through up here. So here I'm just going to have the component anime words. Title is just this text here. And we hit save. And well, it did something because the words got stacked, which is not what we want. Now, how do we fix this? Well, this is right now because our spans and our parent div here inside the anime words component are set to display block, which by default means it's going to vertically stack consecutive components on top of each other, but that's not what we want. We actually want them to use inline block instead. So we add a class name, inline block, add the span as well. And great, now we, we're back to where we were. Uh, the words are actually in line and behave as we expect them to, as if they were kind of one big word. So now we have the structure down. Let's add the animations. Now, there's two sets of animations that we're going to need to add. The first is we're going to call it stagger children. Now, why do we need this? Well, remember, we now have six individual components. And just to add a little bit of nuance, let's say to the animation, we're going to have them come in after each other. So a little bit delay in between each of the six span animations. And so that's where we need to set kind of the stagger attribute of the parent of the six spans. And so we'll say, okay, all of my children, I'm going to animate them all in, but then I'm going to add a little bit delay between each uh, a stagger each of them. So for that, all we need to do is say in the animate property inside the transition property, we need to just set, I'm going to set two attributes here, delay children a 0.4 and stagger children a 0.1. So the stagger children is actually what's saying what's the space in between each of the children animations, like the starting of each of the children animations. So that's the 0.1 seconds. And the delay children is just a delay saying, okay, wait for 0.4 seconds, then start animating the children in, saying wait for about half a second. I think it adds a little, it's not really required here, but I think it adds a little bit uh, of a nice little nuance here as well to the animation. Great, so that's the first animation we need. The second is the actual animation of the word. So let's call this word animation. And for this one, we just need to bring it in vertically to slide up. We're not going to do any fading in here. You can add a fade here if you want, but here I'm just going to have it move up vertically. So I just need to set the Y attribute beginning and end points. And for the transition, I'm just going to copy in this transition here. Hit save. And we have defined the animations, which is great. So let's go back now to the index file and let's start adding these animations in. So first thing is let's add the stagger. So here, again, each thing essentially in this is going to be a child. So we need to set the kind of staggering attributes to the span at the very top. So let's make this first motion span. And then pass in variance. And then we just pass in the stagger children. 
Of course, it's not here. And then let me just also pull in here board animation because we're going to need it in a second. So that's one. And then now let's actually add the word animation. And we're actually going to animate, of course, these spans here. So here I'm just going to add variance. Well, why is it not coming up? Uh, well, that's because we need to make this a motion span first. And then add variance word animation. Now, let's hit save. Let's refresh the page. Okay, that is doing something. It is definitely animating them up. But uh, that's not really what we were going for necessarily. Now, why is that? Well, it's because unlike in the previous animations, we didn't set an opacity value here. So even as a starting point, it's fully seen. And so all you're telling it to do is like move up vertically. But obviously, <laughs> this is not exactly what we're going for. So how are we going to solve this? Well, one way is to set an opacity value to zero initially, and then opacity of one as the endpoint, just like we did with the other animations. And that would work here. It definitely works here just to get this kind of in a usable state. But there's this kind of other way or other type of animation we can do here to make it look like each of these words is almost like it's coming in from behind a wall, which I think actually looks way neater and way cooler, but requires a little bit of extra work. Not too much, actually. So how are we going to do this? Well, we actually just need to add one simple attribute to a couple of these elements here. So on the div and the span, all we need to say is overflow hidden. Overflow hidden and overflow hidden. And if I hit save, well, it does a little bit of shifting here, but it's fine. Look at that. Because we said overflow hidden, it defines kind of the box of where it should be at the end. And whenever the text is outside that box, it's hidden. So then it really looks like it's coming up from behind the wall, which I think this looks super, super cool. So with all that, we have now built out all the animations of this landing page. If you have any questions on anything we talked about, feel free to drop them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you with some good answers here. Uh, and also, if there are any other topics you want to see covered on the channel, let me know as well in the comments. Always looking for ideas of what's kind of most helpful for all of you. And I'll also link on screen under another really cool tutorial with some animations for you to check out next. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks.